Abraham Lincoln revered as the great emancipator, but was he really the champion of freedom that historians portray? Prepare to uncover the uncomfortable truth about Lincoln's deep-seated racism and his reluctant approach to ending slavery. In 1858, Lincoln boldly proclaimed his belief in the inherent superiority of the white race. He vehemently opposed any notion of equality between whites and blacks, cementing his racist ideology. And let's not forget his own words. Lincoln freely used racial slurs like the N-word, revealing his true sentiments towards black Americans. Upon ascending to the presidency in 1861, Lincoln prioritized preserving the Union over addressing the abhorrent institution of slavery. He reassured slaveholders that their property would remain untouched. Even when faced with the opportunity to emancipate African Americans, Lincoln hesitated. The Emancipation Proclamation was not an act of moral conviction, but a calculated tactic to weaken the Confederacy, with little regard for the humanity of those enslaved. Standing amidst the Civil War's carnage, Lincoln's second inaugural address prioritized reconciliation over a condemnation of slavery as the true evil it was. This muted response left many, especially those suffering under its oppression, feeling betrayed. Only in the twilight of his presidency, with the Confederacy crumbling and his own life in jeopardy, did Lincoln reluctantly voice support for limited black suffrage. But by then, the damage was done. Abraham Lincoln's legacy is not one of heroism, but of hypocrisy and racism. Let us strip away the myths and confront the harsh reality of a man who, when faced with the opportunity to be on the right side of history, chose instead to perpetuate injustice. Sure, the Emancipation Proclamation was a fancy piece of paper, freeing slaves in the Confederacy, but only because it benefited the Union war effort not out of some grand moral awakening. Lincoln wasn't naive. He knew the tide of the Civil War wasn't solely determined on the battlefield. He needed a powerful move, a blow that would cripple the Confederacy on multiple fronts. Enter the Emancipation Proclamation, a document as potent as a cannon blast. The South's economy was built on the backs of enslaved people. Cotton plantations, factories, and even infrastructure projects thrived on their unpaid labor. The proclamation ripped this vital workforce away, a body blow to the Confederacy's ability to produce food, supplies, and weapons. It was akin to severing the arteries feeding the war machine. But Lincoln knew the South relied on more than just muscle. They desperately needed European recognition, particularly from Britain, a cotton-hungry nation. The South gambled that Britain, heavily invested in southern cotton, would intervene to protect its supply. However, there were factors that made disrupting the cotton trade less risky for Britain than some in the Confederacy believed. Britain had already begun exploiting cotton production in other parts of its empire, like India. Additionally, the war had caused a rise in the price of cotton, which actually benefited British textile manufacturers who could now charge more for their goods. Lincoln himself dabbled in colonization schemes, dreaming of shipping freed blacks back to Africa. Champion of freedom? More like champion of convenience. And let's not forget Lincoln's well-documented racial prejudices. Abraham was a man who enjoyed minstrel shows. These were theatrical performances that relied on racist caricatures of black people for entertainment. Remember, history has no room for revisionism. By acknowledging the limitations of Eurocentrism and seeking accurate and inclusive accounts of the past, we can create a more informed and fair future for everyone. If you found this video interesting, consider hitting that like button and subscribing for more explorations of history.